So going back to First Peter chapter three and verse number nine, but contrary wise blessing, you only have blessings that you can offer. Knowing that ye are thereunto called that you should inherit a blessing. You're called to inherit blessings. Always your call, your calling in life is to inherit the blessing, not the curse. Don't stay under the curse. Don't receive that. When a curse comes, say, no, not in this house. It shall not come into this house. Stay away, stay away. This house is, has nothing to do with the curse. I don't belong to the group of the people who are cursed. Psalm 91.10 says, It shall not come nigh thee. It shall not come nigh your dwelling where you live. It shall not come nigh your dwelling. So when a curse tries to knock at your door, you answer back with the blessing of God. When the devil says, I got a packet for you, you say, I'm blessed. I don't need your junk. Oh, maybe God sent it. What is it? Sickness. I'm blessed. God never sends sickness into my life. He's a liar. He's a thief. He's a cheat. Don't receive it. Refuse it. Refuse it all the time. Refuse it. Use your, use your faith and say, no, I'm strong. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory. I don't live according to the world's economy. I live according to his riches. So when the devil comes in with a bag of his tricks and tries to offer you power to you, say, no, I'm so blessed. I'm abundantly blessed. Take that filthy poverty out of my life and get out of my way. I'm blessed. In my pathway, there is a blessing. There is no curse in my pathway. There is no way that the devil has authority over my life. I'm on the highway. You know, the Bible talks about the highway. Go with me to the book of Isaiah. Going down the highway a couple of times, I've seen all kinds of dogs dead, bloodshed, birds dead. And all of a sudden, I got a revelation. I said, my, that's right. In my pathway, there is no evil beast that can come because you are in the highway. Isaiah 35 and verse number 8. Isaiah 35 and verse number 8. And a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. That's the person who is righteous in the sight of God. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall be not found there, but the redeemed, but the redeemed shall walk therein. The highway is for the redeemed. And the way of, is holiness, the pathway of holiness. And that's the highway that you're supposed to be. And when those evil beasts, they come by the highway, they are knocked off very easily because it's called the highway for the redeemed ones. When the devil tries to walk across your pathway, he's going to be knocked down at the higher speed that you're walking in with Christ Jesus. And he has no way of trying to attract you into anything. He's going to be destroyed. Destroyed. You couldn't stop the speed that you're at. I mean, you wouldn't want to even stop. You wouldn't even want to even consider trying to even help a little dog trying to jump over into the highway or a bird try to fly. I mean, your, your speed is too much for you to try to even help this bird out or the dog. Likewise, God says, you're in the highway, the way of holiness. You're walking in the, at such a speed, your spiritual journey is so powerful, 
So when the devil tries to come in, he's just wiped out because you're the redeemed. You're the redeemed one. The next verse tells us that you start rejoicing. Chapter 35. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain Joy and gladness and sorrow and signs shall flee away. You've got to be joyful. You've got to be joyful. You've got to be joyful. You've got to be... I mean, if you're going to walk in this pathway, you're going to... In this high, highway, you're going to be so joyful. There are rules and regulations. You can't walk with sorrow. You've got to go with joy in your heart all the time, bubbling in your heart. I'm just rejoicing. I'm just rejoicing. I'm just rejoicing. And the devil would try to attract you and he would try to come over you and try to attract you, but you say, no, I'm just rejoicing. I have no time, devil, to even consider you. I'm considering Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Author and the finisher of my faith. I have no time for you, devil, you're a liar. Get out of my pathway. Why shouldn't you be blessed? Consider yourself. Why shouldn't I be blessed? Because if I'm the righteousness of God, then I'm blessed. With faithful Abraham. I'm blessed. I'm supposed to be walking in the blessing. Why shouldn't I be blessed? You talk to people, they'll always, negative people, they'll always say, well, this must be the reason. That must be the reason. Maybe, maybe, maybe there is some sort of a thing that you have to, well, you've got to go into deep prayer and right, try to think, well, where you have missed. Maybe there is some sin in your life. Maybe there is some hidden sin in your life. So you do that all the time. You try to go before the Lord and try to, Lord, Lord, tell me, Lord, where is the sin, Lord? Well, the sin of unbelief is evident. The sin of unbelief is evident. If I have faith, and if I have faith in the revelation knowledge of God's word, I will never act in the way that I act and say, well, maybe for this reason, I have probably, this could be the reason I'm not blessed, or that could be the reason I'm not blessed. Whenever you have these reasonings coming in your mind, you've got to pull them down. That's what the word says. Go with me to the book of 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse number 3 onwards. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3. Though we walk in the flesh, though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Satan always wants you to bring down to a reason to a reasoning level where you would start reasoning out things in your life. So the weapons of our warfare, the next verse says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Don't try to fight the enemy or to overpower the enemy by carnal weapons, by trying to reason out in your mind, having arguments and imaginations in your mind. Or maybe I'm just thinking, maybe it must be this, it must be that. And that's exactly where the devil wants you. He wants to confuse you. He wants to confuse you. Confusion, wherever there is confusion, there is no faith. You're not operating by faith. Confusion paralyzes your faith. Confusion will always paralyze your faith. That's the reason the devil wants you confused. That's why all kinds of teachings that people go, go into and then they're confused. Instead of knowing that I'm the righteousness of God, I'm qualified to be blessed. And I know I can be blessed. There's no reason why I should not be blessed. If all what God has done for me, if all what God has done for me, there is no reason that I should not be blessed. I should be walking in that path. I should be saying, if there is no reason, there is no reason, I, don't, I just don't know one reason why I should not be blessed. If God gave his only begotten son, and if Christ was given unto me, how much more will he give us freely all things? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And if he gave us his son, how much more will he give us? How much more will he give us? That's the reason we should not put out all our reasonings and try to confuse our minds. We've got to say, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to serve the Lord with joyfulness in my heart. And I'm going to, Lord, look to you and say, Lord, there is no reason according to the scripture why I should not be blessed. There is no reason. Satan comes with his bag of tricks and he says, maybe this is the reason. Maybe that is the reason. 
He's a deceiver. He's a liar. He's a cheat. When Christ has given you overcoming strength, He has made you more than a conqueror. He has made you more than a conqueror. While the devil tries to put reasonings into your mind and say, oh, maybe, yeah, that's what the Bible says, but, but, the buts and ifs really put us in a position that we find it so difficult to overcome our situations. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. If you are trying carnal weapons, remember, you've lost the battle. Carnal weapons don't give you any solution. Carnal weapons... If you're using carnal weapons, trying to reason out in your mind, using your flesh, trying to do things by your own strength, trying to help God out when God has already given you a promise, Abraham tried to help God out in the flesh and he, and he brought forth an Ishmael. He brought forth an Ishmael. How many Ishmaels do you think we should bring forth when we should not be? When God has already promised us and Isaac, we're going to stand forth and say, Lord, your word is true. It's ever settled in heaven. And I know that I know that I am blessed. I'm not trying to help God out by my fleshly weapons. Abraham used his fleshly weapons and he made a mess. He used his fleshly weapons. Don't ever try. Don't, don't let the devil just let you use fleshly weapons. He wants you to use fleshly weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You don't have carnal weapons to fight evil powers. You don't use carnal weapons to fight evil powers. You just mean what you say. And one of the strongest weapons that you have is joy. 